Hi everybody, this is Bogus Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the brand new NECA Ultimate Robocop Alex J. Murphy figure. So before we take a look at Alex, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, he comes with a set of relaxed open hands. Up next, he comes with an alternate right hand for spinning the gun around, and I think that's very awesome. I'm glad NECA included this as an alternate hand. Up next, he comes with two pistols in the pistol holding hands. And these look really good, they're sculpted very nicely. They have just a little bit of silver paint on them, but they still look really cool. He has a holster on his right hip that you can put one of the pistols in. But this clip right here does not want to stay down. You can see that it's already coming out just a little bit. So yeah, I do wish this would snap down just a little bit better. Up next he comes with his helmeted head sculpt. And this looks very nice. It's sculpted very nicely, and you can actually move the visor up and down there, so that is a very cool touch. Up next, he comes with an alternate Screaming in Pain head sculpt, which is going to go with the upcoming accessories I'm going to be showing off on him. And this looks spot on. The look of pain there on his face and the blood splatter right there, that looks really good. The sculpt on this just really captures the emotion from that infamous scene. Up next, he comes with his blown off hand. And this looks really cool. It's sculpted very nicely. My main complaint with this, though, is I think it should have been a translucent plastic, a translucent red plastic, instead of just this solid color. So despite it not being translucent, it still does look really cool. Up next, he comes with his blown-off arm accessory, and this is gruesomely detailed. NECA did such an awesome job on that. The way the material is covered in blood right there, and you can see the stump, that looks really good. You can actually see the bone sticking out there. That is detailed really well. That looks very awesome. And finally, he comes with an alternate shot-up vest. And this looks really awesome. Just like with the arm there, it is gruesomely detailed. The way the glossy blood is painted on there and the holes looks really good. And the way the fabric is sculpted right there from the holes, that looks pretty realistic. NECA did a very awesome job on this accessory. I think this looks very awesome just like that. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look at his regular head sculpt. So taking a look at this head sculpt, I think NECA did a phenomenal job at capturing Peter Weller's likeness. The sculpt on this looks amazing. The hair is sculpted really, really nicely and has a nice dark brown wash over top of it, bringing the details out really well. All of the head sculpts on this figure are just done very, very well and just really capture his likeness. The one weird thing when I was switching the heads out is there's some black scuff marks on his neck. I couldn't get rid of them, so I'm not sure what that's from, so that is a bit unfortunate. If you have his neck like that, you really won't see it, but yeah, from the side, it's pretty noticeable. The vest looks very nice. I can't tell if it's cast in blue or black. I can't tell if it's cast in black and has some blue over top of it or vice versa, but it does look really nice. My big complaint, though, is the snaps on the side here will never connect. You can try and stretch it, but as you can see, it's kind of creating a stress mark right there. So yeah, the snaps don't even come close to being connected, and if you do get them connected, they'll just pop right out. So it is unfortunate that it won't snap down. If you have it like this, it's not super noticeable, but from the side it is, because you get that cutout for where the peg should connect. You can see the OCP Detroit Police logo there on each of his shoulders. That came out very clean. He has some incredible texturing to his suit. All of the wrinkles and the textures look really nice. You get some black paint down in these, and this actually rubbed off on my fingers whenever I opened him. Just like with the uh, Raphael's The Wolfman figure I recently reviewed, some of the paint was rubbing off on my fingers. I had a bunch of black paint on my fingers. So that is very weird. I did wash this off and it seems to have stopped, but it's really weird that that even happened in the first place. Even underneath the vest, he has some excellent sculpt work to his suit. It looks really good. I do feel like it's a little bit brighter than the rest of the figure. You can see right here it's a brighter blue and it fades into that darker color right here. But I do think it's awesome that they sculpted some really nice detail there. Some more great sculpted detail there on the back. I believe that's Mace here on his back. It's not removable. It would have been really cool if you could have removed that and put that in his hand though. A place where you can see the texturing really well is the pants. All of the wrinkles are sculpted really nicely. And the texturing is more prominent down here. That looks very nice. And then there are his boots. They're done in a nice gloss black color. And all of the laces are sculpted really nicely. He even has sculpted tread on the bottoms of his feet. So yeah, there's not an inch of this figure that's missing any sculpt. All of this is sculpted phenomenally. So now let's go ahead and go over his articulation. 
He has a ball jointed head and neck that can look up just about all the way. He can look down all the way. He can move his head and side to side very nicely. He has shoulders that can move out that far. He has double jointed elbows that can bend in that far. They do move side to side up here and side to side down here in the forearm. On these relaxed hands, he has a swivel wrist that can move side to side and up and down. On the gun spinning hand and the gun holding hands, it actually has a hinge. So those hands hinge up and down and move side to side. On the blown off hand, there is no articulation, so it just moves side to side there. He has a ball jointed diaphragm that can actually move back all the way, even with this vest. Can move all the way. Of course, then it kind of moves out like that, though. He can move side to side very nicely. He has ball jointed hips that can barely move out. He can kick forward very, very slightly. He can barely kick back. He has a little bit of a thigh swivel. I'm kind of surprised at the articulation down here. I mean, you don't need to get him in a lot of crazy poses, but it is more hindered than I thought it would be. He has double jointed knees that can actually bend all the way back. He doesn't have a boot swivel. I really thought he'd have a cut right here for articulation, but he doesn't. He does have a swivel at the ankle though that can move down all the way, up just a little bit, and an ankle rocker. So for the only size comparison, here he is next to himself after he becomes Robocop. So overall, I would highly recommend picking this up because NECA did a very awesome job on this, and it comes with some very, very awesome accessories. I honestly thought this line was done, but I'm glad it wasn't, because this is a very awesome figure. The only real complaint that I have with it is that the vest doesn't snap into place properly, but other than that, it's a very awesome figure. So yeah, definitely pick this up. So that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.